All right, so when we last left this, here's the code that I've got. What I'm trying to do is display this data on screen. So all my code and my syntax is right. What I was forgetting is, um, right here we're trying to put all of the raw data into that string and then display the string on screen. Close. This is going to be that um, we would need to say which specific class. So let's do this. On line 74, it should currently say data, but instead we want to add data, square brackets, zero, dot doc, dot underscore ID. I'll explain what that's saying in a moment. Now save it and run it. And, uh, and you should get a result on screen, and I'll explain what's going on. Let's see. I'm going to save and run that. I'm going to click Show Classes. In my case, I get class 007. Okay, what if instead of data 0, you put data 1? Same code, but I'm going to put data 1. Save and run that. Show classes 111. Okay, so what's happening here is this is similar to what we did in the browser previously when we did db.get. Which one? ID number 500 or ID number 123. This is kind of backwards, where instead of me saying, give me the information of class 123, I'm saying, what is the ID of the first item in the database? What is the ID? of the third item in the database if you have three items. If you don't have three items, it'll give you an error because it doesn't exist. But I'm going to go here, show class, one, two, four. So here, again, I'm saying, show me the ID of the document that's in the third, actually the fourth, because it's zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three, it's the fourth one. Show me the ID of the document in the fourth position, put it on screen. Well, we have ID and two other fields. What are those two other fields again? Title and name. Title, yeah. What about if we change that? Doc dot title. Show me the title of the document in the third index. And show it on screen. Let's see that. Show class. English 2. So basically what we're saying here is um, we can access a position in the database from zero to infinity if we've got lots and lots of data from zero to infinity. And we're saying, and, and the syntax has to be, well, PouchDB, it, it expects then doc right here. And then here we're saying ID or title or inst or description, or whatever we invented right here. ID, title, inst. And we, if we added more fields, then we can display all of those fields by just changing whatever field that is. We don't have a description, but we could do description. Yes? So, um, when, you, when, you, when you type up doc, doc, whatever it is that you want to Put in that you're asking for something specific of the data that you entered, but what's the three? We um, this keeps track of it as zero, one, two, three. In the database, we've got the zero with item, the first item, the second item, the third item, which is the fourth one. So the three is zero, one, two, three, the fourth item in the database. We put it in ascending order right here. Ascending true. It's in alphabetical order. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So of the instruction or of the um, title, because 
to be counted as title, it would be the third one that you entered, uh, uh, you know, um, in the title uh, of the titles that you can enter. Exactly. Kind of. Think about it more. Or the fourth one, actually. It's yeah. the fourth one, yes, but it's not exactly the fourth. I wouldn't think about it as the fourth title. I would think about it more as the fourth class, specifically the title. Okay. So this right here is, you know, the first position, the second position, the third position, and then the title, or the instructor. Okay. Or okay, if you had instructor, it'd be the fourth instructor. Yeah. Okay. That you entered. That you have previously entered. But if you haven't entered in for checkers, exactly. Watch then this. It's empty, no. Give me number a hundred, number zero. So, uh, ladies, if you have any, if you have any questions, there, remember to ask. You're being a little loud. Um, I'm doing ninety-nine here. Show class, no result because there's no, there's no one hundred. See that? So if I put it back on zero, this is my very first one, 007. Yeah, and I actually did funny, something funny there. Because this class, it's the title of this class, Spying 101. And who's the instructor? So notice, I didn't change this. Uh, it's to show me the ID or the title or the instructor of the zero with item in the database, the first item in the database. Okay. Now, can you make another sh uh, show table of classes or whatever um, that would show more things, more uh, more okay. fields? Fields, yeah. We are going to do that right now because. This is obviously very limited. It shows one class, one field. This is furthermore, let's build that table. Let's build a table that has rows and columns. We'll have a column for ID, a column for instructor, and a column for class title. And then we'll, on the first row will be uh, Spying 101, and then on the second one will be English 1, and on the third one will be English 2. So this is just to show you Again, we're still pulling one thing at a time out of the database, but we've set ourselves up, actually, to show all the items in the database. We just wanted to get, I wanted to get this far for us to see something, that we're getting something out of the database and we're showing it on screen. Because I had told it, give me all the docs. And right here I'm just specifically saying, okay, doc01 or doc02. Two or doc ninety nine or doc one thousand, but I don't want to manually write that. I want an algorithm. I want a way for the computer to automatically show zero and then one and then two and then three and then ninety nine and then one thousand. So this is not quite complete. But if this is working so far, great. We'll move on and make a table and such. Anyone need any help? Is it showing something at the moment at least? An alert. Um, well, you might still have an alert somewhere that, that you didn't delete, maybe on line 78.
Okay, so here we are showing one particular element in the database, which is not that efficient. I want a table, just like this right here. This is a table. You've got these columns, and you've got these rows. I want to create this on screen, and we have that ability. We have a table tag, so we're actually going to insert some HTML here and display it on screen. And then we're going to have it automatically show the ID of data 0 and the ID of data 1 and 2 and 3 infinity. So we're going to make it loop. We have a way for it to loop as many times as necessary. I don't know. Right now I think I've got five things in my database, but we can set it up so that it'll go up to 500 things or 5,000 things. So this line that we've got here 
I'm just going to comment it out because you can keep it there maybe to kind of study what it is, but this isn't, this isn't exactly what I want it to do. On the next line, then, we need to type again var string because we've actually deactivated that. And instead, we're going to build a table here. So in quotes, we need quotes here because this will be HTML that we're going to put into the string, and then this will show that HTML on the screen. And so a table tag. We need the table tag. On the next line, we'll say str plus equals, and we will close the table. We should highlight. We're starting our string and we're filling it first with the start of the table. And then on the next line, plus equals, we're going to add to the string the end of the table, because stuff is going to go in between. That's why I separated it. Start of our table, end of our table. Don't forget the slash. And so what I want to do is I want to add an ID to this table so that I can control it with JavaScript. And um, that means uh, we'll go back to 75. We'll write ID uh, space. ID, so this should be familiar. We've got an, an HTML tag and then an ID equals single quotes. We need the single quotes here because we get the double quotes on the outside. If we do double quotes, we get that whole thing where it, it cuts it off. Remember that. And we will just call this um, I guess just class table. We'll have an we'll 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 have this known as class table. And then that means later with CSS we can change the look of it. And then also with JavaScript we can reference it. Now JavaScript or jQuery could know there's a table on the screen called class table because it has an ID. And uh, after, well, before ID, remember I like to keep IDs as the last property. So before ID, we will add a property or an attribute called border equals single quotes one. I want a simple one pixel border around my table so that it's not invisible. If I don't specify a border, it'll be invisible. So I'm here I'm saying one pixel border around my table. So, to further build on the table, uh, a table is defined. This is a perfect example. This is a table. The table is defined. The whole thing is a table. Table tag slash table. And then we've got a top row here. These, this text, student, ID, code, and the code. These are headings. This first row has some headings. And the next row... Uh, is a row, and then the next one is another row, another row, another row. And then there's cells. So all of this can be represented in HTML. So first, I want the first row at the top. So we're going to say, still within the quotes, on line 75, we're going to say the tag tr, start a table row. We're defining the whole table, but then we're defining a row, our first row, and actually we need to then close that table row. And so we're going to have a column to show the CRN the uh, title of the class and the instructor. So each cell of the, of the table uh, has, has a tag, and that tag is TD. 
table data. When they were inventing this, they should have chosen a better name, but they called it TD. This is a table cell, and it needs a pair. The way it's looking is, we've got the whole table, we've got our first row, and then we've got one cell on that row, TD slash TD. And the very first cell is going to be CRN. The second cell, so I defined the very first one here. The second cell, another TD. Another TD pair. My first cell is CRN. My second cell, TD, table data. My second cell is going to be title. So I'm going to say. I put capital title and capital CRN. This is going to display on screen to the user. So it'll say CRN, it'll say title. And then I want one more, one more cell. So another TD. So just make sure that you're writing these before the end of the row. There's a row, and then it ends. The row starts right here, and it ends here, and it's got this cell, and this cell, and this cell. And that third cell will be instructor. Save it and run it. Just click Show Classes. Hopefully you get CRN title instructor table. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help on that? There's a lot of code here, and it doesn't help that it's all one color. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's that. So to confirm, it should look something like that. It's still not showing the data yet. We're getting there. CRN title instructor. Anyone need any help? Okay, here's my code so far. Building this table, and then on the next row, it's going to display the data, and the next one, and the next one. Very close. I think we Thank 
Okay, so if this displays, we're, we're getting on track here. It's going to have, just like my spreadsheet here, uh, we've got a row and then the headings and then the, the normal rows. So headings, these are headings. This student name and ID number and such is, is different. It stands out as a heading. So actually, I forgot a little thing. These are, these are not regular TDs. These are not regular cells. This, at the very first, is a special cell. It's a heading cell. So these should actually be headings rather than plain old TDs. So, in, yes, TH. So instead of having TD slash TD, we're going to do TH slash TH. TD slash TD. TH slash TH. TD slash TD, TH slash TH, because these very first uh, cells in this row should be headings, like a table. That's what, that's what a normal table is. The very first row is headings. I forgot about that. Just go ahead and change those TDs, TH. You should do it six times. Opening tag, closing tag, opening, closing, opening, closing. Turn those three TDs pairs into TH pairs. So if you check it, slight difference. There it is as a plain old TD, and here it is as a TH. Yes, it just becomes bold, but it gets the meaning that this first row are headings. Okay, so next line, str plus, oh, I'm sorry, not, not yet. Um, next line, here we started the table and the first row. Here we end the table. In between is where we're going to build row by row by row. We have a JavaScript command that will let us loop over and over and over automatically. This is known as the for statement, F-O-R. So we'll type for, open close parentheses, space, open close curly braces. Basically, for this number of times, do the following. It could be two times if we've got two things in the database. It could be 200 times if we've got 200 items in the database. For this number of things, do the following. We're going to check something here. This is a conditional statement. We've seen the if-else conditional statement. We've seen the switch conditional statement. Here's the for conditional statement. There's some condition 
that needs to happen in order for the rest to happen. If this happens, do that. Or else, do that. Switch between this, this, and this. And here we've got 4. So here, inside of 4, we need to say what's the condition? What needs to happen in order for us to do the following? This one's going to have some weird syntax, and it's basically only found on the for statement, but it's always like this. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to create a variable at the moment, a temporary variable for us to jump between this row and the next row and the next row and the next row. And traditionally, um, we create a variable called i. This can be anything, but traditionally in most, in almost everything, every tutorial about JavaScript, when we do for statements, it's usually i, traditionally. I think it stands for index. We're creating a variable called i, and we're setting it equal to 0. We're going to start then on the 0th item in the database. Start from the 0th item. That's basically what that's saying. Start on the 0th item of the database. And again, this is weird syntax, because then we're going to do a semicolon here. We never do a semicolon in the middle of a statement, except for the for statement. I think that's the only one like that. Um, we need to then say, okay, if we know we have three items in the database, we're gonna we're gonna look we're gonna show item zero, one, and two, three items. If we have five items in the database, we're gonna go between zero and one and two and three and four. If we've got a thousand items, then we would go between zero and nine hundred ninety nine. I don't know how many I have at the moment. I don't know how many I'm going to have in the future. So I can't say go between 0 and 1,000 because I might eventually have 2,000. So we're going to do a cool trick right here. Between 0 and whatever number of items we have in the database. And that is um, i less than data.length. We talked about length before. Briefly, that was in the JSON. In the JSON practice, we had nine social networks, and we used something in there at one point of a social dot length, I think, to say uh, give us a random. I remember it was the random number. We wanted a random number between one and nine. So we said social dot length, I think. So here we're saying, start from the zero with item and just go as far as the data that we have. Up to 3, up to 300, up to 3 million. So go between 0 and 100. Between 0 and 12. There. As long as i is less than the total length of the data. Between 0 and 5, let's say. And then semicolon. And in order for us to then, we're going to display the very the zero with item. Then we need to display the first item, and then the second, and so forth. So then we have i plus plus. And this is common syntax. Go from the zero with one, and then go to the next one. Then that'll become a one. Is one less than five? Yes. Do the next. And then i plus plus, so 1 plus 1 becomes 2. So that becomes a 2. Is 2 less than 5? Yes. So do it again. 2 becomes a 3. Is 3 less than 5? Yes. Do it again. Is 4 less than 5? Yes. Eventually it's going to go, is 5 less than 5? Is 5 less than 5? No. no. So then it jumps out of the loop. It's done looping. This is how it can then display everything in the database. It's going to start on the first one and go as far as the data. And that's all done. Break out of the loop. Continue. This is a for statement. It's very useful for looping through data. <coughs> Where? No, because 5 equals 5 would really only do something once. Um, 
No, because we do start counting from zero, just like I've got right here. The very first ID is zero. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense. If we were counting from one, we would have to do data.length plus one. Um, but we're starting with the zero with item, so this will work. Zero is less than five. So inside of the fourth statement, this is where we're going to build each row. Each row is made out of the CRN, the title, the instructor. So on line 77, inside of the fourth statement, we're going to add to the string str plus equals. In quotes, we need to start a new table row and a table data. Don't close them yet because this table row is going to show three things. The ID, the title, and the instructor. Three things. So we're going to start a table row and a table data. Plain old cell, not a th because that's a heading. Plain old th. Um, after the quote, plus, data, square brackets, dot doc, dot underscore id. I didn't put anything here. Up here, I said, show me the zero with item. This is going to be the zeroth item, the first item, the second item, etc. So we will use the placeholder i, data i. So we put an i. Because the whole statement is saying, we're going to start from zero. So i is zero. That's a zero. Is zero less than five? Uh, yes. So the zero becomes one. And then do this part in here. Create a row, create a cell, put the ID of the zero with item. And then it loops again. I has now become one because of I plus plus. So now think of that as one. Is one less than five? Yes. Okay, make one a two. So then put um, two there. Data two, data three, data four, data five, data 99. So it's going to keep looping through all of the data in the database. And it's going to show the ID. But ID is not the only thing we've got to show, do we? So we're going to, at the end of that line, add a plus and then enter. This is going to be a really long line, but I'm going to just break it into multiple lines. So that plus, notice I didn't put a semicolon yet. This is still part of the string plus equals. So I put a plus and then I break it to the next line. And here I'm going to say, in quotes, I'm going to say close the TD. Because I started TD, I show the ID, I close the TD. And then I open another TD, another cell. It's similar to what we did up here, but more complex because we have to show three pieces of data. The next piece of data plus data i doc dot title. On the second cell, now we're going to show the title of zero. We show the ID of zero and then the title of zero. And we have one more. So another plus, another new line. Quotes again. Close the TD again. Again, because we started a new TD here to display title. So we're closing TD here. And we're starting another TD to display the next data from the database. 
another TD data I doc inst. Those are the three pieces of data that we have for every class. ID, title, instructor. Plus, then we have to finally close it all. We have to close the TD, the table data, the cell, and we then have to close the, the whole row. We started a row right here to display the zero with ID, the zero with title, the zero with instructor. There's a whole row. Close the row. And um, at that point, uh, this is going to show one piece of data from the database. But it's going to automatically loop as many times as we need it. Let's uh, let's run it. Load that up. Show classes. All the data. And so it did it in an instant because it's not a lot of data. But this algorithm right here was, was building a row by row by row, a zero with piece of data. Which was, uh, which was ID 007, title Spine 101, instructor bond. And then it closes the row. And then it goes to the next one. One is one less than seven or whatever. Yes, so do it again. So that's going to be data one, which is 111. Uh, data one title, 111. And then it's going to go through it, and that will become a two. Is 2 less than 7? Yeah, do it again. So data 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Raise your hand if that worked. Okay, good. Let's uh, pause to make sure it works for everyone. Anyone need any help? Here's my code here. Yeah, it does look a little tricky. But uh, it's basic HTML with extra JavaScript plus an algorithm to get to the Can you go up to your
Okay, so. On the one hand, this looks a little complicated, but this is a relatively simple algorithm. An algorithm is a programmatic technique to accomplish something over and over. We programmed it once, and then it will continue to work. What about if you had a brand new class? I'm going to add class 555, title, uh, phone hacking, and instructor Mitnick. Add class, class added, show class 555. So we're able to still add classes and now show those classes, whatever we add to it. And it's alphabetical based on the CRM number. We could show it, alph show it alphabetically in different ways, via title, for example, or via instructor in other ways. But right now we just said the IDs, we're using the IDs and those are what keep it alphabetical. I'm going to add class 000, and title 000, and instructor 000. Add class, show classes, and it goes before 007. So it's putting it in order of your CRNs. And then displaying the data on screen. So um, if you've got that working, let's take a short break. And then when we come back, we'll, um, we'll do some more operations with this database because we're, we're able to add to the database, show the database. And remember, we have two other things to do with the database. So let's make sure our code works at this point. It's 8.15. We're back at 8.25. <coughs>